Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe free radical substitution of alkanes. You should then be able to describe the problem with free radical substitution. Ok, over the last few videos we've been looking at alkanes. Now a key idea you need to understand is that alkanes are unreactive molecules and there are two reasons for this. Firstly, alkanes are non-polar molecules. That's because carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms have a very similar electronegativity. In later videos, you'll see that many molecules react due to their polarity. So because they're non-polar, alkanes are unreactive. Secondly, the bonds in alkanes are relatively strong and take a lot of energy to break. And again, this makes alkanes unreactive molecules. One way that alkanes can react is via free radicals. Now before we start, I need to point out that free radicals are sometimes just referred to as radicals. However, I'll be calling them free radicals in this video. A free radical is any species with an unpaired electron. I'm showing you two examples of free radicals here. We have the bromine free radical and the methyl free radical. As you can see, we show the unpaired electron as a dot. Now a key idea you need to understand is that free radicals are highly reactive species. So even though alkanes are unreactive molecules, they can react with free radicals. We're going to look at the free radical reaction between alkanes and halogens. I'm showing you here the equation for the reaction between methane and bromine. As you can see, a hydrogen atom on the methane molecule has been substituted with a bromine atom. And because this reaction involves free radicals, this reaction is an example of free radical substitution. We also see free radical substitution in the reaction between methane and chlorine, and I'm showing you that equation here. So we're going to look at the stages in the reaction between methane and bromine. But these can also apply to any alkane, and also to chlorine as well as bromine. There are three stages in this reaction. These are called initiation, propagation and termination. At the start of the reaction, we've got a mixture of methane and bromine molecules Br2. In the first stage, which is called initiation, we shine ultraviolet light onto the reaction mix. The energy of ultraviolet light causes the single covalent bond between the two bromine atoms to break. Now you need to remember that a single covalent bond consists of a pair of electrons. When the bond breaks like this, one electron now goes to each bromine atom. Because these now have an unpaired electron, these are now bromine free radicals. When a covalent bond splits in this way, scientists call this homolytic fission. So in the initiation stage, we make a pair of bromine free radicals. Now I should point out that we only require a few of the bromine molecules to form free radicals in the initiation stage, and you'll see why in a minute. Ok, the next stage is called propagation, and this has two steps. In the first step of propagation, a bromine free radical reacts with a methane molecule. Remember that a free radical has an unpaired electron. To make an electron pair, the bromine free radical takes a hydrogen atom plus one electron from the methane molecule. And in order to illustrate that, I'm showing the electrons in the covalent bond in the methane molecule as green dots. This reaction produces both hydrogen bromide and a methyl free radical. In propagation step 2, the methyl free radical now reacts with a bromine molecule. This produces our end product bromomethane plus another bromine free radical. Now if we look at propagation steps 1 and 2 together, we can see that they form a chain reaction. The bromine free radical formed in propagation step 2 can now go back and react with methane in propagation step 1. So this reaction will continue until the final stage takes place, which is called termination. In termination, two free radicals react together to form a molecule with no unpaired electrons. This is now a stable molecule and no longer takes part in the reaction. There are three possible reactions in termination. Two bromine free radicals can form a bromine molecule. Two methyl free radicals can form a molecule of ethane. Or a methyl free radical and a bromine free radical can form a molecule of bromomethane. Ok, now there is one big problem with free radical substitution of alkanes, and that is that we get a whole range of side products. For example, if a bromine free radical reacts with a molecule of bromomethane, then we make dibromomethane. We can get further reactions to form tribromomethane and tetrabromomethane. As we've seen in the termination step, we can make ethane. 
And this ethane can also react with bromine free radicals, forming all the molecules I'm showing you here. And if we carry out this reaction with longer chain alkanes such as pentane, we could produce a huge range of products, including different isomers. So at the end of this reaction, we need to separate out our product molecules. OK, I just want to end on one final point. Some teachers use curly half arrows when describing free radical substitution of alkanes. But I should point out that AQA, EdXL and OCR do not require students to use curly half arrows. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe free radical substitution of alkanes. Mm -hmm.